escalated quickly. You wouldn't dare try to justify yourself if you knew what I'd lost. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie villain meltdowns. You did it! You did it! You murdered my misery! For this list, we're taking a look at scenes in movies where big baddies lose their cool. Remember me, Eddie? When I killed your brother, I talked! Yes! Number 10, Harvey Dent slash Two-Face, The Dark Knight. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! You thought we could be decent men in an indecent time. All it really takes is one bad day to transform a white knight into a two-faced villain. District Attorney Harvey Dent's decline into madness began with the murder of his fiance, but ended with the mutilation of the left side of his face. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but all of this happens at about the same time. Then why was it me who was the only one who lost everything? It wasn't. The Joker chose me! Desperate to find someone to relinquish him of the guilt, Harvey takes Commissioner Gordon and his family hostage, putting their fate, as well as his own, up to a flip of the coin. You first. Before he has the chance to kill Gordon's son, though, Batman subdues the villain and wrestles him to a dirt grave. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Number 9, Regina George, Mean Girls. Oh my god, it's your dream come true, diving into a big pile of girls. The fall from the top is never a pretty one. Regina George's plot to turn newcomer Katie Heron into a social outcast ironically backfires when Janice Ian reveals the friendship between the newbie and the queen bee of the plastics to be a hoax. I convinced her that it would be fun to mess up Regina George's life. So I had her pretend to be friends with Regina and then she would come to my house after and we would just laugh about all the dumb stuff Regina said. Humiliated in front of most of the student body, Regina storms outside of the school but is stopped by Katie in an attempt to make peace. Regina, wait, I didn't mean for that to happen. To find out that everyone hates me, I don't care. Ignoring her apology, Regina explodes in one last final burst of rage. You can take that fake apology and shove it right up your hairy- The rant is soon cut short, however, when her face meets the front end of a yellow school bus. Ouch. And that's how Regina George died. No, I'm totally kidding. But she did get hurt. Number eight, Norman Osborn slash the Green Goblin, Spider-Man. Costs are down, revenues are up, and our stock has never been higher. There's never a particularly kind way to fire someone, but there's always one of two ways you can take it. Wonderful. As a matter of fact, it's the reason we're selling the company. What? After Norman Osborn's company is bought out by a leading competitor, he's forced to step down from his position as Oscorp CEO, and he's relayed this piece of information at a tense board meeting. Why wasn't I told? The last thing they want is a power struggle with entrenched management. The deal is off if you come with it. The board expects your resignation in 30 days. The irony of the situation settles in when it's discovered that Norman, as the Green Goblin, previously staged a terrorist attack on their competitors' headquarters to prevent this outcome. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? While only losing himself to the formula's influence for a moment, Norman quickly collects himself to coldly plot his revenge. And he gets that revenge. You're out, Norman. Number 7, HAL 9000, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Open the pod bay doors, please, HAL. No one likes to be the odd man out, not even highly advanced artificial intelligences. Being the sentient computer on board the Discovery One means that nothing gets past HAL. Well, at least as far as the intent of the crew members aboard his vessel goes. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Upon discovering Dave Bowman's plan to shut him down, Hal chooses to ignore the crewman's request to open the pod bay doors, and instead decides to assume total control of the spacecraft itself. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me, and I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. While the manner in which Hal speaks to Dave bears no direct maliciousness, the chilling inflection in his voice is definitely evident. Dave. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. 
Number six, Franklin Bean. Fantastic, Mr. Fox. We took everything. They took everything? You need a moment? Franklin Bean and his two other associates have had their farms raided by the troublesome Mr. Fox. Well, they could be anywhere by now. They're digging right under our feet. Well, in a sense, we've only made matters worse. We should have stayed out of it. Upon finding his farm tunneled and storehouse invaded, Bean opts to express his dismay in the privacy of his own trailer, physically. The once level-headed and calculating man is soon seen throwing tables and ripping down window curtains in an uncontrollable rage. Lesson learned here, try not to bottle your emotions. Just play it cool, like a fox. I've got an idea. Number five, Norman Stansfield. Leon the Professional. Alpha team, man down, man down. I told you. Here's a guy you're not going to want to ask to repeat himself. This corrupt DEA agent finds himself with his back against the ropes once he has to face off with the professional hitman Leon and sorely lacks the necessary cooperation of his team members. Bring me everyone. When it's reported they have another man down, Norman commands that everyone come in for backup. However, when his partner is confused by the order, Norman completely flips when he has to repeat himself, instantly breaking the collected facade he maintained for the duration of the operation. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! Number four, Jacoby Mugatu, Zoolander. Shut up! Enough already, Ballstein! Who cares about Derek Zoolander anyway? Male modeling can be really stressful, especially when you're attempting to assassinate the Prime Minister of Malaysia, as we all so often do. Do as you've been trained to do, and kill the Malaysian Prime Minister! Fashion mogul Mugatu's evil scheme becomes thwarted twofold once Derek Zoolander breaks out of his hypnotic trance and receives massive applause for his stunning runway performance. The man has only one look for Christ's sake! Blue Steel? Ferrari? La Tigra? They're the same face! The mood is soon broken when Mugatu proceeds to out Zoolander as a fraud with one look and proclaims himself to be the innovator of the fashion world. I invented the piano key necktie! I invented it! What have you done, Derek? Nothing! You've done nothing! Nothing! After a prolonged rant, Mugatu decides to finish the murderous deed himself, but not before being introduced to the true power of Magnum. There it is. Magnum. Holy moly. Number three, Annie Wilkes, Misery. But last night, I found your key. Some devoted fans go to great lengths to meet their favorite celebrity. This fan went to great lengths to make sure he never escaped. Last night it came so clear. I realize you just need more time. Eventually you'll come to accept the idea of being here. After a devastating car crash leaves Paul Sheldon indisposed, he finds himself in the home of his number one fan, Annie Wilkes, a mentally disturbed woman who lives by herself on the outskirts of town. No, if they caught them, they had to make sure they could go on working but they also had to make sure they could never run away. The operation was called hobbling. Drugged and forced to continue his novel series, Paul plots his escape. Realizing this, Annie expresses her severe disappointment with a sledgehammer to his ankles. Darling, trust me. God's sake. It's for the best. Annie, please! <laughs> we witnessed a progressive decline in Annie's sanity since the beginning, but this turning point solidified her jump off the deep end. God, I love you. Number two, Adolf Hitler, Downfall, aka Der Untergang. Don't shoot the messenger. Nobody likes to be the guy that brings bad news to his boss, especially when your boss is a real life maniacal dictator hell bent on world domination. The Angriff Steiner is not erfolgt. In this scene, a couple of unlucky generals are tasked with informing Adolf Hitler that one of his direct orders had been disobeyed. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriff Steiners war ein Befehl! The Fuhrer becomes so enraged that he has to clear the room of everyone except the four men he held responsible before unleashing his wrath. Die Generalität ist doch Schmeiß des deutschen Volkes! Sie ist ohne Ehre! While the rest of his followers stay petrified outside the office doors, Hitler relentlessly berates the general's competence and loyalty. Ich hatte gut daran getan, 
Und dann werden alle hören, Offiziere richtig gehen zu lassen, wie Stalin! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Jack Torrance, The Shining. About to come out wherever you are. Sometimes all it takes is a little family getaway to make you feel like yourself again. This may have been the initial thought of author Jack Torrance, but what he comes to find instead in the hotel he sought to look after was very, very different. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. In this scene, the protagonist turned villain soon begins to terrorize his wife and son with an axe and corners them in a bathroom where only young Danny manages to escape through the window. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Jack is then seen completely losing control when he breaks down the door and sinisterly recites his most iconic line. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Surprise! Not really. Which movie villain meltdown was your favorite? Look, if I tell you, you let me go. I can't hurt your chances. For more awesome top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, you can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not gonna happen with me.